In this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, different ways in which a panel navigator can be configured in a UX component. So, the uh, panel navigator is one of the fundamental building blocks of the mobile application, and the panel navigator is used to switch from one panel card to another panel card. The panel cards themselves are the containers where the actual uh, content, the controls that are displayed to the user are actually contained. So you can see here we have a, a UX component with uh, three panel cards. There's the first panel card over there, the second panel card, and then the third panel card. And these three panel cards are wrapped in a panel navigator. And currently this panel navigator has been set uh, to carousel mode. But if we go here and look at um, the various types of panel navigator types, we, c we can see that in addition to carousel, there's also programmatic tab buttons, tab band, uh, list, and orientation change. So what we're going to do in this video is take a tour of these uh, different methods and discuss uh, when each one might be the appropriate uh, technique to use. So let's go to the browser now where we have uh, several different versions of uh, the panel navigator working. So if we go here to the first um, display here, we can see that this p uh, panel navigator has been set to carousel mode, which means that the user is going to use a swipe gesture to move from one panel to another panel. So you can see here I'm simulating a swipe with my mouse and uh, I'm moving from one panel to the next panel and then you can see that as, so as long as you move the panel more than a certain distance it's going to animate into view. So there you go. You can see now if I don't move it enough it'll go back to the previous panel. So you can see that as we navigate past the end of the, pa uh, the one panel we move on to the next panel and then when we get to the end if we go past the end you can see we go back to uh, the uh, last panel and then the same when we go uh, uh, to the left of the first panel basically we go back to the first panel and the reason that we go back to the first panel is that in this case we don't have what's called loop navigate turned on so if we go back to the builder right now and we can see here that there's a property called loop navigate and so with loop navigate turned on when you navigate past the end of the last panel, you go to the first panel, so now we're at the last panel, so this is going to bring us now back to the first panel, and if we go in the other direction, you can see that that's going to take us to um, the th last panel, which was panel number three. So um, this is the carousel, which is um, the default uh, navigation method for a, uh, a panel navigator. So let's go back now and look at the next uh, control here, that, um, the next component. In this case we've set the navigation method to programmatic. So you can see now that I actually have a button on the panel and when I tap on this button over here we're going to go to panel number three and now when I tap on this I'm going to go to panel number one. So uh, programmatic is um, my own JavaScript that controls uh, the panel navigation. So let's go back now and take a look at how that was done. So we'll go to the programmatic option here and we can see now that there's our buttons. So there's uh, the button on panel card number one and if we go look at the JavaScript we can see that we've used the panel uh, set active method um, uh, which is a uh, method in the uh, JavaScript library that lets you specify which panel card should be active. So here we can see we've said panel set active and then panel card 2. Now we could have done this using Action JavaScript. So let's go here and delete this and switch back to Action JavaScript and then go to Actions, UX Component and then choose Panel Actions and then we'll go here and we'll say we would like to uh, set the active panel uh, to panel card number 2 and uh, we'd like to turn animation on and if we go and view JavaScript we can see there's the JavaScript that got written for us. So so just to recap, if you choose the um, method of uh, navigating the panel navigator and you set it to programmatic then um, what's going to happen is you'll need to write your own JavaScript to switch from one panel to the next panel. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our um, discussion of the different techniques of navigating a panel navigator. And now let's take a look at this next option, which is tab button. So when you use the uh, tab button option, 
which is displayed over here, you can see that um, uh, the developer has put his own buttons in the uh, panel header here and uh, uh, the, these buttons are being used to control the active pane. So you can see there's pane 1, pane 2 and then pane 3. So let's go back to the builder now and see how that was done. So you can see that uh, we've set our navigator type here to tab buttons and then we've added a panel header uh, to the uh, panel navigator and we've put three buttons into this panel header so uh, button 1, button 2 and button 3 and we've labeled each button uh, pane 1, um, pane 2 and then pane 3 and now we can con st we can style these buttons any way that we want so we've chosen um, advanced button styling here and we could go and set these buttons to be icons if we wanted uh, or icons on and text or anything that the uh, advanced button um, allows and then what we've done to configure the navigator is um, when you set the navigator type to buttons you, you need to go here and define the actual tab buttons uh, and which panel that each tab button is associated with. So if we bring up the builder here, we can see that uh, we can add as many items to this list over here and for each item we specify the button ID and the corresponding panel ID. So what this indicates here is that the first button, which, which has an ID of button under bar 1, will control or will bring panel card 1 into focus and then button 2 will control panel card 2 etc. So um, configuring the uh, tab buttons is, is very easy. I could of course put this uh, as a panel footer in which case the buttons would appear at the uh, bottom of the screen. So um, so therefore, so now we've looked at uh, the uh, next uh, option which is uh, uh, tab buttons. Now let's go take a look at um, lists. So in this case you can see here we've got a list control and uh, when we tap on the first item in the list we're going to go directly to the uh, first panel card but when we go here and we tap on the second item in the list this list has been configured to have sub items so when I click on sub lists that's going to bring a sub list that has got uh, list item 2 and 3 and so when I click on uh, 2 I get to panel card number 2 when I click on 3 I get to panel card number 3 and then if I go back twice I go back to the beginning of the list so this is a more complex um, panel navigator than the panel navigators we've looked at up until now and uh, what what you can do here is you can create arbitrarily long uh, and complex uh, lists with multiple levels of nesting on the list and then when you reach the uh, leaf item uh, on the list that will bring a particular panel uh, into view. So let's go back now and take a look at how that was done. So let's go look at the list over here. So again we can see that we've set our um, navigation type now to a list and then we need to go and actually define the list. So we bring up the list builder and you can see this is our uh, tree control that dis that uh, that uh, displays the hierarchy of our list. So list item one is a leaf item, and so it has a target panel of panel card number one. Then underneath list item one, we have sublists, which is a uh, branch, and that uh, therefore does not have a target panel. But underneath uh, su uh, sublists, we have list item two which is a leaf and therefore that has a target panel which is panel card number two and um, this uh, uh, next leaf item here uh, controls uh, panel card number three and you can see here that we've also configured a list item one to be displayed as a list and uh, then we've also got this here displayed as a list but let's go and take a look at a different uh, display option here so let's pause now and look at how we can configure this not to be a list of list items but a list of buttons. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing our discussion on the panel navigator and we're looking at the uh, method of navigating the panel navigator uh, of a list and now let's go here and change this from a, um, a list to buttons and then go change the sublist here 
two buttons as well and see um, how this renders differently so we'll go ahead there and save this now and so now you can see that instead of having a list which fills the panel card we have a button list which uh, uh, is um, not quite filling the uh, the panel card so this is going to go directly to panel card number one uh, but when I go here and I choose the sub list that goes to a sub list over there which has got two buttons on it and now this will go to panel card two and this item here will go to uh, panel card uh, number three now you can also see that we have in the header here we have this uh, back button which takes us back up the hierarchy of the list so let's go back to the builder now and actually see how that was done so uh, you can see that in the panel navigator we have a, a panel header and inside this uh, panel header we have a button uh, we've said that it's advanced button styling um, and we've turned on the sub theme of left and by turning on the sub theme of left that has caused this button to have this um, um, back appearance so it's got the arrow pointing back to the left then when we go here to the uh, panel navigator itself we've uh, said here that in the section navigation buttons that this panel navigator has a back button and then we've given it the ID of the button that we'd like to uh, configure as the back button so by simply checking this property over here and giving the ID of the button we've automatically um, created this uh, back button that takes us back through the hierarchy um, uh, of the uh, selected items uh, in the list so now we've looked at the uh, list method now let's take a look now at uh, tab buttons which is the uh, uh, next method that we have so let's go now look at, uh, at tab buttons and uh, go over to um, working preview here and we can see that we have these tab buttons here so let's go take a look at it uh, in the browser so um, I believe this is tab buttons over here so you can see that here's our tab buttons and when we t uh, uh, click on these different tab buttons we're getting uh, different panels coming into um, into view um, and you can also see that the tab buttons here are displayed at the top of the panel card but when we switch for example to uh, this component over here we see the same tab buttons controlling the uh, panels but this time the uh, tab buttons have a different appearance and they are set to uh, appear at the bottom of the screen so let's go back now and take a look at uh, at how that was done so let's go back to uh, tab buttons top um, over here and go back to the designer and uh, we can see now that we've set the navigation type to tab buttons we've set the tab band location to top and we set the tab band sub theme to base so that's causing the uh, buttons to appear at the top but you can also see that the uh, button text is pane 1, pane 2 and pane 3 which is different than the ID of the panel so you can see that the ID has says panel card 1 so uh, each panel card has in addition to the ID property has a property called display name which you can optionally set so in this case because we want our buttons to say um, something more friendly than just panel card under bar one we've gone ahead and we've explicitly set the display name so you can see that the display name is being automatically used for the um, the tab buttons so now if we want to see those tab buttons at the bottom of the screen we'll just simply go ahead here and change these properties so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing our discussion on the panel navigator and let's take a look now at uh, how we can configure the uh, uh, buttons to be the tab band the tab buttons to be at the bottom of the screen so if we go here now and we look here in the builder you can see that we've now set the tab band location to bottom but we've also set the sub theme of the tab band to bottom so if we didn't do that if we for example left it at base which is what we used for, for the tab bands being on the top then what we would have is um, the same tab bands um, uh, as we used when the location was set to top uh, just positioned uh, differently but not styled differently so now we go back here and we set the base the, the sub theme to bottom and now we end up with um, the bottom view over here you can see this black view um, of the uh, tab button so there's the uh, um, 
the tab buttons configured uh, both on the top and the bottom and by using a uh, sub-theme we get the uh, slightly different uh, appearance. And now finally the last uh, uh, navigation method is the orientation change. So in this case here you can see that we've now uh, cut this down to uh, two panel cards, one for uh, uh, portrait and one for landscape. We've set our orientation, our uh, navigation method to orientation change and we specified that the uh, portrait orientation uh, um, panel to show is panel card 1 and landscape is panel card 2. So let's go now and preview that. So now we're in um, uh, landscape and we're seeing panel card number 2 and now we're in uh, portrait and we're seeing panel card number 1. So now we can go back here and just look at some other options. You can see also that when you have the orientation change you can specify the animation method. So let's go now and change it from none to slide and let's go take a look at that. So now you can see when we do our orientation change the uh, um, other the, the second panel um, uh, is animated into view. So what we've done in this uh, series of videos here is take a look at um, several different methods for using, uh, several different methods for navigating from one panel card to another panel card inside a panel navigator. Um, and uh, the particular technique that you're going to want to use in your application is going to depend uh, completely on your own use case. Uh, if you have a large number of uh, panels in a, uh, in a panel card, in a panel navigator, then for example a list is uh, a, an ideal way for navigating because uh, with a carousel the user would have to swipe for, uh, all the way through all of the various panel cards to get to the card of interest, but with a list control you can um, uh, have direct access to a large number of panel cards that are in the panel navigator. A carousel is great when you want the user to um, swipe navigate uh, programmatic is great when you want to uh, have complete control over the um, the um, navigation method and of course orientation change is very useful if you want to have two different layouts one for landscape and one for portrait and you want to just switch automatically from the one uh, layout to the um, other layout and then finally the uh, tab band and tab buttons are also nice when you want to have direct access to a particular tab but you don't have as many uh, panel cards in the panel navigator uh, as uh, as would require as as you would uh, uh, as you would need uh, if you have a list control uh, which gives you direct access to a large number of uh, panel uh, cards. So thank you very much for watching.